Let's derive some expressions together. In this derivation, we have three objects that are connected by ideal strings that are being accelerated by a force F across a frictionless surface. You are asked to derive an expression for the acceleration of the middle object in terms of F and M. First and foremost, I want to define this for you. Ideal string. That is referring to a massless string. Also make note, we are dealing with no friction in this derivation. So these three objects are being accelerated by a force F. I'd like for you to get out your three-step plan for deriving expressions and follow along as we work through this particular problem. Step one. Step one is where we translate the problem and we come up with a plan for the derivation. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and call these three objects and the strings a system. It is one system comprised of the three objects and the strings. All three will share an acceleration. That's what's so cool about a system approach that I taught you about in previous videos, is if one object has this acceleration, then the other object also has that acceleration because we are going to find the acceleration for the system. Also, the tension forces internal to the system are going to be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and therefore will cancel out. I'll show you that here in a minute. So, let's go ahead and look at step two. Step two is where you want to choose a fundamental equation for this particular topic, which we're dealing with dynamics and forces, and I believe Newton's second law is probably a, a great starting point where the sum of the forces is equal to the product of the mass multiplied by the acceleration. So if we use this, I want to first talk about these internal forces that I'm telling you will cancel out. Now go ahead and take a look at tension force one labeled T subscript one on your screen. There are forces occurring to the right and the same force occurring to the left between that object and the next object. Now look at tension force two. And please note that the magnitudes are equal and the directions are opposite, which is why these internal forces to the system cancel out. We have a rightward force again between the mass and the 2m mass, and then we have a leftward force equal magnitude, opposite in direction, occurring as well. So I will be omitting those tension forces from our summation of Newton's second law because they are equal and opposite. They cancel out. Okay, so what do we end up with here? Well, the first bit to, to really think about in this one is the fact that, okay, why is this problem asking me to solve for the acceleration of the middle object? Well, the reason for that is so that you conceptually can understand, hey, if I use a system approach and find the acceleration of the entire system, then that is the acceleration for each of these three objects that are in the system. So when we take this approach and we have our large system and our composite mass, we have one force acting, and that would be the force F, to the right, this force here referred to in the problem, and it is accelerating a system of objects to the right. And so we need the composite mass. Well, 2m plus m plus another m gives you 4m. That's the mass of the system. And of course, we're trying to solve for the acceleration of the system. Once you get past those conceptual hurdles, this becomes very simple. So the acceleration of the system and therefore mass 
to the one in between the middle uh, object is the force divided by four times the mass. And all we're doing there is taking and isolating the acceleration of the system, which ends up being the ratio of this force and the four masses. B, derive an expression for the tension force T1 in terms of F. So now we're trying to find T1. What does that mean, guys? That means very similar to when we did a system approach for Atwood machines, we're now looking at this single object. And that one object is what we're using to determine the force of T1. Now, before we do that, I want to talk to you about the force of T2. I'm going to expand what I define as a system here to include T2, or excuse me, M2. So now I have two masses as a part of my system. I am excluding this large mass of 2M. And when you look at this, you can see that this tension force is now accelerating twice the mass. Okay, and even though this is frictionless, please remember these objects have inertia. They have a, a resistance to acceleration, to being set into motion. So I want you to understand that T2 is greater than T1. And I've expanded my defined system to include both masses on the left. So conceptually and visually, you can see that and think, oh, that makes sense. T2 would be greater than T1 because T2 is the tension force and it is accelerating not one mass, but two. Now let's go back to what this question is asking about this one mass. And let's go ahead and acknowledge we've already found the acceleration of this one mass because we found the acceleration of the system. And that's common among all objects within our defined system. Okay, so now we're going to sum the forces for object one, which is the mass on the far left. So what forces are playing in the horizontal direction? Just one, that would be T1, our tension force to the right. Those are, that is the only force acting horizontally. And so we can set it equal to mass times acceleration. But unlike what we did for the system, we're only talking about accelerating an object of mass M. So one mass of mass M. So I am not using a system composite mass because I've already uh, found the acceleration of the system and now I'm applying that to this one object, the mass on the far left. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the expression we derived in part A Remember, that was the acceleration of the system, which means it is the acceleration of each object in our defined system. I'm going to substitute it in for the acceleration of this object, the object on the far left. And I come with this expression on the right. So we have mass multiplied by the ratio of the force over 4m. Well, step three in the three-step plan is we simplify our expression. Well, you may notice we have m for mass in the numerator and mass in the denominator. So if we took this one step further, we would get our final answer that the tension force one is equal to the overall force. Now remember, that's this force divided by four. In other words, it is one quarter of the force of this force that accelerated all three objects to the right. And that is our final answer for the force of T1. And remember, please do not get hung up on where it says in terms of. That's the last thing you look at when you're done. Just pick a fundamental equation 
Solve it like you would a normal physics problem with numbers, except no numbers in this case. Simplify it. Oftentimes you're rearranging one equation and substituting it in to another equation, and then you're going to simplify. Then check to see if you satisfied the fact that we need it in terms of f. And we have it. This is our answer, f divided by 4, and that's it. So in this video, I've taught you how to continue to uh, develop your skills in, of deriving expressions. Hopefully, you're beginning to build a little confidence with that, and I'll see you guys in class.